The Hippodrome was the most important public place in Byzantine Constantinople. In a sense, the city was born here. At a grand ceremony in the year 330, Constantine rode a gilded chariot around the track, celebrating the inauguration of his new capital. For centuries thereafter, the ritualized contests of the circus factions, initially four and later two, were the most important public entertainment in the city and became a very equally pivotal source of political theater. The races continued until the Middle Byzantine period, becoming increasingly less frequent, but the Hippodrome remained, or rather maintained, its pivotal role until the Fourth Crusade, which stripped the Hippodrome of many of its artistic treasures. The building was demolished piecemeal in the early Ottoman period. The Blue Mosque, off to our left here, was responsible for its final demise. All that remains now are a few of the monuments that once stood on the Spina, the central barrier. Let's take a quick look at these three remarkable monuments. This is the walled or masonry obelisk. Though imposing enough, it's essentially a discount obelisk, an attempt to build a masonry what was expensive to import from Egypt. It used to be somewhat more prepossessing, being sheathed in bronze, which must have gleamed quite fetchingly when it was new. But, being made of masonry, it's much less durable than a monolithic Egyptian obelisk, and so it's had to be restored several times. If we look here at the base, you'll see the records of one of these restorations by Emperor Constantine VII in the Middle Byzantine period. The inscription rather ambitiously compares this obelisk to the Colossus of Rhodes, dream on Constantine. Looking up the column, you'll see quite a bit of modern masonry incorporated into the fabric. This dates to the 19th century, when the obelisk, precarious as it is, was at the risk of collapsing. This is the Serpent Column. It's much older than Constantinople or the Hippodrome, having been set up in 478 BC to commemorate the great Greek victory at Plataea. The 31 cities who triumphed at that battle have set their names on the first 13 coils of the monument. You can just barely make them out here. This was a votive offering made to Apollo at Delphi by the unified cities. It was shaped, as you can see, like coiled serpents, three of them, whose heads uh, crowned out about oh, three or four feet above where the column currently stops. Those heads carried a golden bowl, which vanished long ago, but the snakes had survived until around 1700, when they were evidently knocked off by a drunken Polish ambassador. The jaw of one serpent was discovered in the 20th century and can be seen in the Istanbul Archaeology Museum. And now, at last, the obelisk of Theodosius, the oldest and perhaps most impressive monument in the Hippodrome. It was set off in the 15th century BC by Tutmos III at Karnak, brought to Alexandria by Constantine, and finally shipped here by Theodosius I, whence the name. We see the emperor with his entourage on all four sides of the base, and there are some interesting inscriptions which attest to how difficult it was to raise this massive granite monolith. In fact, the first word of the Latin inscription here is difficilis, which indeed it was. It appears that a third, the lower third of the obelisk, broke off during the moving. You can see how the hieroglyphs are cut off uh, mid-glyph um, and must have been uh, quite a bit a to-do to get it up here. Here is the man himself, Theodosius, uh, about to crown a victorious charioteer, ringed by his courtiers, and there in the back row, his German guardsmen. You can see their torques if you look closely. In the crowd below, you see uh, on the left and right, two organists, uh, kind of a fun little detail. The emperor and his entourage appear again on the other sides of the base. If we come over here and look below uh, the emperor and his people, we see the obelisk being raised in the Hippodrome. You see men on the left there working capstans, uh, winching the great monolith into place. Notice also the granite blocks incorporated uh, there into the base of the obelisk and the bronze box on which it still stands. Coming over to this side, we have a Greek inscription. Although this was always a primarily Greek-speaking city, uh, the language of the Roman court at this time was still Latin. And so the other inscription facing the imperial palace was in Latin, whereas this side facing the crowd was in Greek. It says, perhaps more accurately, that it took 32 days. The Latin says 30 days. Here we see barbarians making submission, perhaps as an embassy, 
to the glorious emperor, um, with some rather foppish courtiers there around him. And coming around to this side at last, we see a scene from the games that were the constant counterpoint to all of this monumental activity. The chariot races of the Hippodrome of Constantinople. And that, my friends, is a wrap. Thank you very much for watching.